here we go again. As always, add your reference image, rotate it 90 degrees on the X axis, move it a bit back, add a plane, rotate it 90 degrees as well. Scale it up to match the reference image, go into edit mode, add an edge loop, scale it up, add another edge loop, scale it up. Dissolve the middle vertex using Ctrl plus X. Now we're gonna select the middle vertices, press Ctrl Shift B and bevel them. We're gonna do the same for the corner vertices, but not that much. Now to make that hole in the middle, add a cylinder, rotate it 90 degrees on the X axis, scale it up. Select the cylinder, then the plane, press Ctrl minus. Make sure you have the bool tool add-on enabled for this or it would not work. Now select the plane, press Ctrl A, go visual geometry to mesh. Now we can edit the mesh as we want. You can delete the cylinder, we don't need it anymore. Go into edit mode, select all the faces and insert them. Extrude them a bit back, we have a nice 3D definition. Now we're gonna select the boundary edges and bevel them and select these edges as well and bevel them a bit. It gives a nice definition. Now we have the frame ready, so let's move on to the back part. Now comes the really tricky part. We have to model the motor behind it, but the size should be right. And as you can see in this reference image, it's not really good. So I'm gonna drop a pure ref file in the description. You can see a bunch of references to figure out the shape of the motor. Boring. Now let's add a cylinder, rotate it 90 degrees, move it a bit back and give the approximate size that you think it should be. Once you've done that, grab the back face of the cylinder, bevel it a bit. Now add a edge loop, move it a bit back and press V to rip the edge. Now once you do that, you will notice the edge has turned into two edges and you can constrain the edge on the Y axis and move it a bit back to give it a sense of a gap between the motor. Now add another edge loop behind it, go into face mode, select the whole edge loop, press E and then Alt S to extrude it on all sides. Now we're gonna select everything, press P and separate by loose parts. This will make things a lot easier for us. Now selecting the front part, go into the edit mode and select all these edges, bevel them a bit and press E and Alt S again to extrude them outwards. This is the shape that motors usually have. Now select the back face of the motor and insert it. Now we're gonna insert it again, but this time really small amount. Now you see the really small edge loop we got there? We're gonna select that and extrude it inside. Now select the outer frame, go into edit mode and select any vertex you like. I'm gonna select this one. Shift D, P and selection. Now we have a free vertex in our scene. Select the vertex, go into edit mode and now we're gonna start extruding it. You can either match your reference image or go freehand. Now keep extruding and match one of these edges. So after you have a shape like this, in edit mode select everything and extrude it. We have a plane now. We could have done the same thing with a plane but this method is a bit more free for me. Now we're gonna select all the sharp edges and bevel them with Ctrl plus B. Now we're gonna select this edge, extrude it a bit and then bevel this edge as well. Now to copy this frame on all four sides, we're gonna go into this drop down menu, select 3D cursor. Now we're gonna go into edit mode, select everything, shift D and then rotate it 90 degrees. Select everything again, duplicate and rotate it 180 degrees. We got it on all four sides now. While we're in edit mode, select everything, press E and then Alt S to give it a bit of thickness. Now we're gonna get to the fun part. Now we're gonna add a cylinder, rotate it 90 degrees and scale it down. Grab this face and extrude it outwards. Now we're gonna scale it up, but before we do that, we have to set the pivot point from 3D cursor to median point. After you've done that, scale the face up. Now grab this edge and smooth it out using bevel. We have a funnel-like shape now. Now select this face, insert it a bit and extrude it back. Now scale it down again. Once you have a shape like this, we're gonna start working on the fan. Now using the reference as a guide, match the shape of your plane to that of the fan. The best advice I can give you for this is bevel the vertices using Ctrl Shift P and try to match the shape. It worked fine for me, so it should work fine for you as well. After you're happy with the shape, rotate the plane on the X axis towards the front and rotate it on the Z axis on either side. Now we're gonna copy the fan on all four sides using the same technique. If you rotated the plane as I said so, you will notice that none of those flaps are intersecting with each other. If the flaps are intersecting in the middle, use a cylinder to boolean it out. If you want, you can even give some thickness to your fan. Just go into edit mode and extrude it on the Y axis. So here is your exhaust fan, but I'm gonna add a bunch of more details, which I'm not going to teach you. You can watch the time lapse and get an idea of what I did, but do it yourself. These are all the same techniques that I used right now and explained it to you. So knock yourselves out and see if you've learned something from this tutorial. <laughs> we keep seeing the eyeballs glued to us on the sidewalk. But that look could kill. They are trying so hard to find all the weaknesses inside, but, but it's gonna spill. Oh, can we take a minute, turn and face the critics? Let's put flowers in our head like we don't care. And there's a village clown, ooh, nobody's stopping our groove. Ooh, that's good, it's just you and me. And making it laugh with your moves, ain't no stopping our groove. Ooh, that's good, it's just you and me. Some fun life.
like one of a kind girl till morning's here when opinions start to guide us we won't let them define us Play you're still here you know what just because you stay till the end i'll give you a bonus i'm going to show you how to make this cage which many exhaust fans have so go into edit mode select this edge loop shift d p and selection now go into edit mode extrude the edge outwards and then fill the gap using f Now select this edge loop, bevel it out, and add a few inserts. Add a modifier. It would be wireframe modifier. And well, you have a cage now. Have fun.